Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and our flowers this morning. <laughs> Never forget the flowers. Thank you, Father in heaven, through your servant, Joan Arnold. They're beautiful. So we give thanks to Joan and to our Father ultimately for these beautiful flowers. Our opening prayer this morning is all the way from Malawi, Africa. Patrick, would you open us with prayer, please? Thank you. Let's bow our eyes and pray. <clears throat> Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father of this universe, we come to you this morning in all continents with a purpose of praising and worshiping you, Lord. Yes. Father God, I pray right now that you shall bless house church. Lord, though we have gathered here, I pray each and every member, even their extended families, everyone who is sick must be healed every challenge that might have in their minds that takes peace. I pray peace to be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray peace globally in Malawi, DRC Congo, Ukraine, and all over other countries. Lord, I pray for your man servant, but when you be speaking, anoint him, Lord. Open our eyes and spiritual ears that whatever we are going to see and hear shall help us that at the end of this life, all of us, when we shall be meeting in heaven, we shall say amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, yeah, I pray and I declare peace and anointing upon this house church and this service from now up to the end. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray, amen. Amen. Love that prayer. Thank you, Patrick. Um, as long as the three of you are sitting right there, especially with Esther in the middle, could you sing a song on spontaneously? I prayed and prayed, Lord Jesus, I said. Na pempe a pempe a hambu ya ni yanka. Na pempe a pempe a pempe a hambu ya ni yanka. Zirimbu ino ndini. Na pempe a pempe a hambu ya ni yanka. Na pempe a pempe a pempe a hambu ya ni yanka. It is well with my soul. I pray. 
I pray the prayer of Jesus Christ. I pray. I pray. I pray. I pray the prayer of Jesus Christ. It is well. It is well with my soul. In the morning I pray. Afternoon I pray. Evening I pray. Oh, it is well with my soul. In the morning I pray. Afternoon I pray. Evening I pray. Oh, it is well with my soul. I pray. I pray. I pray. Lord Jesus, Christ, Christ. I pray. 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 It is well with my soul. I pray. I pray. I pray. Lord Jesus, us. I pray. I pray. I pray. I pray. I pray. Lord Jesus, us. It is well with my soul. Thank you so much, Reeds and family. And Esther, I was going to ask you to translate that, but the last part of the song, we know exactly what it was about. Thank you. That was just really beautiful. It was. Yes. Um, okay, so we're going to have little bright spots right now. But first, Flavian. Where's Flavian? Is he still? Yes, Flavian, we want to wish you a happy birthday on Wednesday. And David, your birthday is on Thursday, correct? So I won't sing happy birthday to you. That's a good thing. <laughs> but we thank God for you being in our lives and the gift that you are to us. Very grateful for that. So we had a really neat thing happen. I volunteer at the Naval Academy working at, uh, it's called Navy and Marine Corps Relief, where it's basically a store where people bring in clothes and things and we sell them to the community and then 100% of the proceeds go into helping Navy and Marine Corps people who are in need, whether they've lost all their belongings in a fire or they need financial support or whatever we help. So I have a neighbor who comes every two weeks and he picks up probably between 14 and 20 bags of stuff that we give to refugees who are either from Afghanistan or Ukraine who are living in our area that we support them with these items. But we also have kind of, um, I don't want to, the word, he has a connection with a flight that actually goes out to Ukraine. And last week we got a message that I shared with you all that they are looking for medicines for the soldiers out in the field and they're also looking for medicines for babies and children in particular who are still in the Ukraine. So we have an organization through Disciples International who we support because of the church through our missionaries, with our missionaries. And our little church gave out over probably $1,300 worth of medicine to soldiers and children in Ukraine. So I just wanted you all to know that through Operation Neighbor, we have money in there that can go out to help people. If anybody is ever interested in your donation going specifically to that little pot, we help our neighbors, whether they're in Ukraine, whether they're in Maryland, whether they're in Colorado or Africa. So I just want you all to know that we gave out a lot of medicine this last week to Operation Assist Ukraine. And if anybody is interested in having that contact, just send me an email or I, I can get it out to you. So thank you, our wonderful little house church family. You've been a real blessing. That's right, that's right. Um, if I may interject, it's very dark over there in DRC, but I see someone waving, uh, flaving. It looks like a lot of activity in your home or wherever you are. We just wanna welcome everybody that maybe we've never met before. Oh, there he is. Yes, 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 but and uh, Don. I'm here in uh, my brother's uh, Arthur's house with uh, my sister. This is my sister. With, uh, Everybody <laughs> wave. Everybody wave. This is Maria. <laughs> this is uh, brother Arthur with uh, her wife. We are here with all our children. We are fellowshipping and uh, 
enjoying life together so Wonderful. we are really blessed uh, we are glad to be <laughs> to be together the, my sister and her husband came from bukavu they came to visit us so we are really blessed uh, by their visit so we praise we father god yes, we yes. Father. Morning, morning. they will get back home uh, this evening that is why we are enjoying together in brother Atta's house. So we we'll praise Father God for all. Nice. Praise God. Well, nice. Flavian, you let yeah. all, you let everyone there know that they are all bright spots to us today. Thank yeah, same. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. <laughs> the children are playing outside, so we praise Father God for all. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. 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 Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> mm. Hey, Johnny. Oh, you want to say okay. something? Uh, hey, uh, since I am not averse to putting people on the spot, I'm seeing Ronnie here, and it is so hey, good to see you, Ronnie. Okay. <laughs> Can you just share a little bit about how the business has been going for you? That's a bright spot. Yeah, just take it off of the uh, mute and uh, share a little bit with us, brother. Yeah, uh, you, uh, might, you might need Craig's help. Call, call for Craig, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and while, while Ronnie is working there behind the scenes, there we go. Oh, there you go. Go ahead, okay. brother. All right. It's funny you ask that because I was just thinking about that. <laughs> Things have really been going good. Um, through another friend of Craig's, Kelly, uh, who we go to um, Man in the Mirror Bible study with on Friday mornings. Uh, I've met his mother and she's a property manager and she's really been keeping me pretty busy uh, and at some pretty good profit at that. Nice. So I can't even it's it's everything is 100 percent different than it was. I mean, I send Craig a text on a regular basis, letting them him and Sally know how they changed my life uh, with their support. Uh, they've been there like nonstop, 100% all the way. And it's, I can't even begin to tell you. I'm not sleeping on the streets. I'm not drugged out. I have money in my pocket. My clothes are clean. What more can I say? God is good. He is good. R Ronnie, Thank we, you, Ronnie, we are so <clears throat> glad to hear that good news story. You know, the gospel, the word gospel means good news. And God's good news when it gets in our lives, because that's when Craig met you. You were out on the street, strung out on drugs, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and, and, and you know how much Craig likes to help people like that, and that it not always is a success story. But boy, the things you've got, the van that he helped you get, and we've been uh, able to provide some, you know, help your neighbor with our funding to help you with some tools and stuff. Speaking of which, I was going to mention that too. Without those tools, I would have missed the opportunity for a, a lot of very profitable work. I mean, a lot without those tools and that money you guys sent on that card. That's, that's the basis of my success right now. That's great. Well, thank you so much. That really touches our life, Ron. It, it really does. It really you. does. And we want to continue to be involved in, in those kind of ways through Craig into your life. Uh, so we're here for you, my friend, always. Thank you so much. Great to see you, Ronnie. Yeah. It's great to see all of you. Uh, okay, Johnny. <laughs> love it. Would you like to lead us in prayer this morning? Sure. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to open this while wow. Heidi is uh, setting this up. <clears throat> God, uh, I think all of our hearts are just full right now. And I just thank you. Thank you for each of these people here. Um, yeah, yeah. Just the song and just being able to see Flavian and all his family and 
ah, see it, Ronnie again. God, thank you. Thank you so much for what you're doing in his life. Um, just such a huge blessing. And Lord, I just ask for continued inspiration for him and that he would inspire others to do the same thing. Uh, Lord, we just praise you. Thank you for who you are, for being in our lives and just um, giving your love and filling our hearts, Lord, each day. Lord, today we just praise you for all who support the ministries of Disciples International, allowing us to give generously to assist Ukraine with medical supplies. Lord, I ask you multiply this. For Tawana and family who had a beautiful celebration for the life of her grandma, Claire May, Lord, and just ask for blessings and continued healing in her family. For Carly's doctor's appointment, putting off surgery for six to nine months. Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing uh, for Carly and her healing, Lord, and just pray for continued healing for her too. Um, for Mary Miranda and a favorable beginning in the Marines, Lord. Thank you that she's kind of enjoying it. I pray that she'd get enough rest for each day, Lord. For Flavian and Dave Miranda celebrating their birthdays this week, Lord. Thank you for these two men and their lives, Lord, and who they're impacting each day. God, we lift up all these prayers um, in your name, Jesus. For leaders of Russia and Ukraine to know your truth, be transformed by your spirit and live in cooperation and peace, Lord. For protection of DRC citizens from attacks by armed rebels and relief from adverse impact on the DRC economy. For the government in Malawi to address the ongoing unmet needs and unrest of its citizens quickly and effectively. For those affected by floods in the US and beyond including Mexico, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, and Brazil. Lord, I know there's others too, just in the last few days. Lord, just pray for all those people affected. For Joan, as she flies to Illinois to assist her granddaughter and her dogs with her move to her new apartment. Lord, just bless this trip, keep her safe, keep her well, keep her healthy. For Mary Miranda, she seeks friendships with other Christians while training at the basic school in Quantico. Lord, just bless the rest of her training, strengthen her, um, bring other Christians to her life, Lord. For safety, wisdom, and care for teachers and all of our children as they begin the new school year. Um, Jesus, just move in our schools for our house church to shine the light of God's love in Christ to all through us. Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The first reading of scripture is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 8 through 11. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go and say to this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts 
and turn and be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is a desolate waste. Second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Thanks be to God. You're a mute person. Thank you, thank you. Uh, by the way, I want to say to Heidi, who has put the slides together this time, perfect. You did a fantastic job. You know that we are an all volunteer operation. <laughs> so nobody that is involved is really technically expert. We have to learn things as we go. And Heidi and I spent a little time together and then she spent some more and thank you for the slides, they're excellent. And for the readings and for all the sharing that everybody brings as Johnny shared in the opening part of the prayer, what a blessing you all are to us. What a, what a sense of family. So this is the word salt and I want us to think about this. Salt to food is like flavor to life. You can't have one without the other. And Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? What good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Okay, you can take the slides off. I wanna introduce our speaker for today, which is not me. And that's a good thing. Uh, but before I do so, I want us to pay attention to those readings. When Joan was reading from Isaiah, it was like, wow, how depressing can that be? Why would God close our ears and our eyes not to see so that we would turn from our ways to his ways? Well, the reason is because God lets us go our own way as long as we want to. And uh, sometimes that means running into a brick wall along the way. God, just as much as any loving parent, doesn't want their children to go astray. But if that's what we're going to do, he'll let us waiting. And I think, if you will, if God even hopes, hoping that we will recognize that he is standing there waiting to intervene into our lives and to freshen us up and to make us, if you will, salty again. Be salty, that's what David is going to be talking to us about because that's what God has put on his heart. So let's open our ears to hear. Thanks, David, for uh, bringing the message and turning it over to you right now. God bless. All right, Bart, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, um, it's just something that's been on my heart for a little while <clears throat> that... Uh, I think with the way everything is going on in this world, I think a lot of people now are kind of almost afraid or timid to, to share God's word now. So um, when Bart asked me to speak, a couple of things that I wanted to talk about was uh, that we need to become warriors again to go and we need to go and be ready to go and, and serve. And with the serving, provide opportunities to share God's love for us. Um, going back to Isaiah 6, 8. Then I heard of the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. Now, when he was talking to Isaiah, um, he was, uh, he did a couple of things to Isaiah to prepare him. Um, why did, why did God do this? He, 
why did Isaiah do this? Because he, uh, <clears throat> because an angel flew with, flew to him with a live coal in his hand, taken with tongs from the altar. And first going to verse seven, before six, eight, uh, before verse eight, he, he goes with it. He touched my mouth and said, see, this is touch your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sins atoned for. Isn't that what Christ did for us? He died on the cross so that our sins would be forgiven and that uh, we would have an opportunity to spend time with him forever in heaven. And that's the news that we need to share with people. We need to uh, share with others so they have the same hope that we have. Now, in today's world, <clears throat> there's a lot of hostility toward, toward God, toward Christ. Um, in that time, same thing. So when he sent Isaiah, when Isaiah went and he uh, wanted to be sent out, the people here going to these were the these were the the people that uh, he was speaking towards. This is who God sent him out to. He said in verse nine, "Go and tell this people. Be go and tell this people. Be ever hearing but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of these people calloused. Make their hearts dull and their eyes and close their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, turn and be healed." So with that, isn't that what's happening in our country right now? There's a lot of people resistant, not just our country, but around the world. People do not want to hear the word of God. Um, a lot of us, a lot of Christians are being told they're judgmental, they're um, bigoted, they're uh, hypocritical. And that's, that, that's what we have to fight against. <laughs> so the way that we really show, and the, you know, because of a lot of TV preachers, a lot of past, it's especially going on now with uh, what a lot of pastors and preachers are doing. Um, that's what we have to fight against. These are the people that are not hearing. These are the people that are not seeing. So now it's up to us. Um, in our world, in that world now, things are just being twisted around. We have, uh, we're told that men can be women. What did I hear? Saw something about a, a, a man being pregnant. Um, Boys can be girls. Uh, I know they're trying to get the delineation between boys and girls now. We're people, which we are people, right? But there's still a differentiation that, uh, that God made us. He made us man and woman. Um, alternative lifestyles now are being celebrated, but you can't go into school and talk about Jesus. You can't go into school and talk about the love that, that Christ has for people enough to where he died on the cross for them so that they, their sins can be forgiven. Um, we, we can't decide where, what human life is, where it starts, where it begins. Um, and speak, and not, I, I, from what I've been seeing on the news, it's, it's all over our country, but in California, um, what, you know, what's really a crime? Is, is this bad, but it's only bad up to a certain point or after a certain point? Is that when a crime stealing is bad? Is that when? So we, we have a lot that we have to go and, and, and talk and talk to people and share the love of Christ. Um, and uh, we're told uh, you hear wars and rumors of wars. And what else is out there? We have famines, earthquakes, floods. Doesn't that sound like what, what's going on today? That uh, gives us now an opportunity to be salty. Now, I originally had the title, put me in coach, God, send me, because that's what we're called to do. We're called to go out and speak. And, and then after thinking about it and talking with Bart, we figured uh, be salty was even better because then we need to prepare. We need to be this seasoning. Salt. Salt is used as preservative, right? And in, 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 in uh, biblical times, it was used to preserve meat, preserve food so that we can save it for later because they didn't have refrigeration. And uh, what do we need to do? We need to preserve what's good. We need to preserve what's true and what's right. And we need to share with people. And then looking it up, in addition to salt being a preservative, provides flavoring for our foods to make it good. Isn't that what the word of God is? The word of God is, is good. It's right. It's true. And people, people want to hear this. And when they want to hear that, they realize how much they need this. A couple other things, too. Um, on icy sidewalks, they uh, throw salt on there to lower the freezing temperature. Right? So I was trying to think, how can I apply that? And basically... It gives us more room to go and share. People might have their point where they don't want to hear. Um, 
but it gives us more room. It lowers the freezing temperature world. They just freeze us out of them to a point where they'll, allow, they'll, they'll listen to the word. They'll hear something. They'll hear what you want to say. So people, people need to hear about the hope that is in us. And our hope is Jesus. But just to go and share isn't enough now because there's so much out there that we're fighting against. Just our words. Um, so we have to go, we have to show with our actions how what Christ really means in us, what means to us, means for us. So what now? Here I am, send me. I have a friend of mine, great guy. He uh, comfortable at home, relaxed, beautiful wife, a lot of activity just going. And he ended up joining Samaritan's Purse. Some of you guys might know him. And he gave up and he went to go help and minister to people. But before he could minister to them, he went over and he, he cared for them and he helped them, aided them, took care of the physical needs. And uh, he mentioned that uh, one of the guys, one of the people or a couple of people said, hey, uh, you have to earn the right to speak, right? They see your actions, they speak, and then gives you the opportunity to go and share Christ. And now you guys probably know him. His name's Bart. Great guy. And I love that. I love it. Send me, send me. These people need to hear the love God has for them. Send me. And he's perfect example. So what are some of the obstacles we have? Some of the obstacles I personally have, we got laziness. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll get it later. We got procrastination. Um, you know, uh, I'm really kind of in a hurry. I'll, I'll get that. I'll get that tomorrow. I know this person is going to be out here. I know I'll probably see them tomorrow. Tomorrow never really comes. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. Or, ah, uh, you know what? They would have, they would have more. They would list me more if I wasn't so tired. Oh my gosh. I work so hard. I'm doing so much when I'm rested. They'll really hear the gospel from me. Um, in Proverbs, they talk about the see Proverbs. If you have your Bibles with you, Proverbs 22, 13 says the sluggard says there is a lion outside or I will be murdered in the streets where there's always an excuse to say, Hey, you know what? It's too cold outside. Oh, it's too hot. Um, it's too windy. There's all, I'll get it later. There's always something when you're inside thinking I got a better opportunity later, you're missing that opportunity that person might have. Uh, to hear what gospel says and Ecclesiastes 11 4 whoever watches the wind will not plant whoever looks at the clouds will not reap if we're looking at everything else that'll keep us from talking from working from showing people the love of Christ that opportunity will not come because there's always another excuse the next day um, or distraction Today, I'm going to pray for this person. Oh, you know what? Let me check. Let me check my email first. Let me check this or let me look. Uh, let me look at. Let me check and see what the headlines are so I can know what to pray for. We get distracted. We need to take the opportunity now. We need to be salty. We need to go and make sure we do the work God sent us to do. So we have to look at the example Christ gave us. And one thing, one thing that I love was in Mark. I love this little section of Mark. And we'll go through a little bit of time. Um, Mark 5, where Jesus is speaking to people. Um, and we'll start with initially verse 4, or, uh, 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 chapter 4. Jesus was on the, on the lake. He was on the one, shore, uh, one side of the lake. And he's speaking to um, the crowd. Well, as you can imagine, if someone's speaking and they're speaking, they're projecting their voice. Then he's thinking, uh, we'll go, uh, let's see, verse four. Jesus was probably a little tired from talking all day and then giving private lessons to disciples. He's speaking. And then his disciples are like, what? Can you explain this to us? And then uh, Jesus will go and give his little private um, interpretations, private lessons to his disciples. And uh, so I can imagine he's pretty tired. I know if I'm speaking all day, if I teach a class, I know I'm like, okay, even though I didn't do a whole bunch, this energy put out gets you tired. So what did Jesus want to do? He's like, hey, let's get in the boat. I'm going to rest a little bit. Let's go to the other side of the lake, other side of the lake. So they got in the boat. 
as they're going, a storm happens. Well, you can tell how uh, tired Jesus was because he fell asleep. He got the storm going. The boats are all moving. And he still fell asleep, fell asleep on some cushions. And uh, the disciples are like, hey, Jesus, don't you even care? We got this storm going on. So Jesus got up. It says here in uh, verse 39 on chapter 4, he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, be quiet. The wind, the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Now, when Jesus uses his powers, he's a human being. He's God, but he's man. And so his body will be fatigued. He's pretty tired. Didn't stop him. They went across. As he's coming across, as they go across the lake and they pull up and they go back on shore, you know he's tired. Excuse I use all the time. Excuse uh, we all use. And so now he comes across and he's on, he goes to the other side of the lake. And who does he meet? This guy comes up to him, the demoniac. Um, Jesus didn't stop and say, hey, I'll get you later. You know what? Do you know, you know what I just did? I just stopped a storm. No, he met this man. Um, how many times have we seen someone who could really use just a strong word, maybe just an arm around a shoulder, just <clears throat> a kind word? Uh, when I was working at the fire station while I was at, we had a, we had a, 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 a police station across the way. And every once in a while, we get a call to the police station. Hey, this person's hurt. We're bringing in this, this, uh, this um, guy that's handcuffed. Can you just check him out so we can medically clear him, so we can book him? So on this particular day, we had a call. And uh, <clears throat> no problem. We walked across the street. We're taking care of him. And there's this guy. <clears throat> in the back of an ambulance and he's handcuffed and uh i'm not to say he had a demon in him or anything like that but he was a handcuffed man and he was yelling at us and i go up to him and we're talking and he's yelling at me yelling at my crew i'm gonna kill you all because you know what just let me out of the handcuffs i'll kill you i'll kill you and i'm thinking oh shoot i got this guy in the back of an ambulance threatening me how am i gonna relax this guy well, he's not going to listen to anything I say until I gain his trust, until I can do something. So I'm talking to him and I'm like, all right, I know you can kill me. You got the handcuffs on and I appreciate that because I know if you didn't have them, you'd probably kill me. But if you killed me, who's going to help you? Who's going to take care of you? And he stopped. <clears throat> and I said, uh, you know, how about if we take care of you first? Afterwards. I'm here. You can kill me. And he stopped and he, he sat down. I said, so what, what's going on? What's hurt? Well, my ankles hurt. I'm like, okay. And as I'm talking to him, his voice starts going down and down lower. And he goes, uh, he goes, my ankles hurt. Well, okay. Let's take care of your ankle. What happened? And he goes, well, I'm living with a bunch of roommates, a couple of guys I don't like it. They're not good people. And I wanted to leave and they wouldn't leave. So I grabbed a knife and I, showed him look i got a knife and i stabbed the wall to show my business and then they call the cops on me so the cops show up and as he's uh <clears throat> as they're moving him from inside the house he fell down stepped some steps and twisted his ankle so i said okay good let's go there what's going on there I said let's talk about this roommate now what's going on with the roommate mm -hmm. well you know what he's he's looking at stuff with kids and i told him he can't be in here and next thing i know i don't know what happened Next thing you know, this guy started, this patient I'm talking to, he starts crying. I'm like, oh, gee, don't start crying. <clears throat> so he's crying. And so we got him going. And I said, I tell you what, we got some nurses at the hospital that are really nice. We've got some great doctors. How about if we take care of your ankle? You go to the hospital, you let them take care of your ankle. You got to be nice to them too. And um, he's like, oh, okay, I think that's what I'll do. And then, uh, I said, okay, now if we take off your handcuffs, are you going to hurt us? No, no, God, just thank you so much for helping me. Well, my captain, who I sent in to uh, get some information, comes out, looks at him. Hey, so you think you're still kill us? And then the guy sat up again. Yeah, he's going to kill us again. I'm like, oh, shoot, there's all my hard work. But I got him relaxed. He was able to go to the hospital. Once we closed the door, I said, listen, 
there's some nice people. Let them take care of you so you can do some good things. So that was my story. Not quite a demoniac, and but a kind word. That's what Jesus did with demoniac. He listened to him. And of course, he cast the demons out. They went in the pigs. The pigs went over the hill and they died. Um, I don't, I didn't see any pigs around. Well, I, gosh, I can't even say that because uh, definitely some, some people that I wouldn't care for, but um, they took care of them. A calm spirit, a caring heart is what people, people would need to see before they're willing to hear the word that you give them. Um, once Jesus got rid of the demoniac, the people are like, we can't be, we can't, uh, you can't be here anymore. <clears throat> Jesus went back in the boat, went across the boat, <clears throat> went across the lake, and he went back to meet the crowd again. Jesus is pretty tired. He just got finished speaking to this crowd. He just got finished calming the storm. He just got finished exercising these demons, putting them into pigs, getting them out of here. Now he's going back across. I don't know about you. I, I'm, I'm tired right now even just thinking about all that. So he uh, now he goes back across the crowds here, and the crowd's crowding around him again. Pretty intimidating. The, I'm sure the disciples are kind of backing people away. Um, <clears throat> so now he's speaking to the crowds, and what happens? This uh, synagogue leader, Jarius, comes up. Jarius, Jarius. Went up to Jesus. <clears throat> Everybody wants something from Jesus now because he can do amazing things. Um, Jarius uh, went right and said, hey, can you help me out? Going to verse 20, let's see. Hold on, I just had it. So going to verse 21, so he's talking to Jarius, and he goes, yeah, I'll go help you. He, had, he didn't have to, but he's, he's Jesus, he's God. And what kind of example do we have if he did not do that? So he goes, yeah, I'll go to your house. And so he went. But on the way, he still had time. A woman believed in him so much, she touched his cloak, and he healed. He healed this woman who had a sickness, bleeding for a long, long time. And she thought, all I have to do is just touch his clothes. Jesus felt this, and he felt the power leave from him. And he's like, who touched me? And his, his disciples are like, are you kidding me? There's all these people around here. Who, how can you say that? And he goes, no, I felt the power. And he saw the woman. Instead of looking at her like, you took this from me. You took this power from me. He's like, no, you know what? Your faith. Isn't that what we need to do is share our faith with the people. We need to have faith that God can do this. And how are, how are we going to have the faith unless somebody tells us? Unless we tell the people. And how are they going to really see and hear your words? Unless you have something to back it up. You have something, a kind word, a gentle spirit, an action. How many of us have seen the results of, of what those, the actions and the kind words do? Perfect example would be Craig. Uh, he just goes and feeds people. That's all he does. And when he's ready, and when the people are ready, they hear his word. We have uh, uh, Ronnie on here. Oh, my gosh. What a great story. An amazing story of someone who took kindness, which opened him up to the word, who changed, changed his life. Um, we basically don't have time to be tired. It's time to be salty again and say, hey, <clears throat> these people need to hear it. These people need to see what love is. It's time to be salt. It's time to be light again. <clears throat> you can't make salt that's lost its flavor salty again, right? But we can become, we can become salty again because of the regeneration Christ has given us. What we have to do is be able to recognize now the opportunities that Christ has given us to go and share with people, to be with people. Um, maybe they can hear the hope but more likely they will hear the hope if they have the actions behind them. At work, I've had opportunities to pray with people because they've seen the way I've treated people. You know, we're not perfect all the time. And like I said, I, I have the most excuses than anybody. There's always a reason. Luckily, I have my wife to help bring the excuses to light. So I say, okay, you're right. 
So now going back to Jairus, he shows up. Jesus goes to Jairus' house. And uh, people are looking at him like, what'd you just do? <clears throat> if you had been here a little while ago, she might have been lived, but there's no reason now. They go up, his, his uh, servants said, hey, your daughter's dead. She's dead. How many people have we met whose spirits are dead because they didn't, haven't had the hope? They haven't had anybody even cared for them. Um, my son, Josh, was uh, they were, he was working. He works as a firefighter also, and he uh, was uh, working downtown. A lot of homeless. <clears throat> he goes and he sees someone outside of a, a store, 7-Eleven or something. And he went and he saw someone sitting there. And he, in his head, he's thinking, I'm not going to give him any money. Maybe I could buy him a pizza. And he thought, no, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Ah, maybe I should. And, um, and then he made eye, eye contact with the guy. The guy looked right at him. And Josh looks at him. And the guy says, hey, can you buy me a pizza? God said, um, like he's thinking, oh my gosh, was I missing the opportunity to do something good? And then God finally asked me. He went in and got the guy pizza. With buying that pizza for that guy who asked him that he was thinking, Josh was thinking in his head that God was nudging him. Um, gave him opportunity to share. And they're, they're telling, oh, Josh, you're too nice. But it gave yeah. Josh an opportunity to share with his crew what his hope is. Um, how many nudges do we have where we can do something or say something um, just to go and be kind to somebody, listen to their word, give them a boost up, go in the store and someone's in line. And you're like, oh, you know what? Why don't you hop in front of me? I can wait. You look like you're in a hurry. How many times can we do that? And with that, an opportunity to come up to share and say, hey, do you know why I do this? Because God loves me. And guess what? He loves you too. And you know how he proved it? Because he died on the cross. So he healed. He healed Jairus' daughter. So to close this, like I said, people need to hear about Jesus, especially in this world with all the craziness going on. Um, they will hear the gospel because of they see our good deeds and praise uh, says so what is it we what we have to do is serve them so people will see the word and hope through you they will hear the gospel because they will see our good deeds and praise god first peter 2 12 i will show you my faith by what i do that's in james 2 18 so with that let's go serve people let's be salty again let's be light and share the word of hope be salty again. Turn your light on. Isaiah 6, 8. Then I heard the voice of the war of Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here I am. Send me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, David, for sharing that. And thanks, everybody, for listening. We've got a few minutes here to just a little conversation as we lead into the capstone of our service, which is always communion. But I want to thank you, David, for bringing a message that communicates what we're really called to do, but we can't really enter into that calling in which till we're available. And that's what you were saying, David. What did Isaiah? Isaiah was prepared by God to be ready to be used. Before God said, so who shall I send? <laughs> it's almost like uh, I wanted to ask you that question before, but you weren't ready. Now you are. And he says, send me. To do what? Well, to do what you just described, David, in the life of Jesus, in your own experience. Thank you for sharing stories like that so that we're not just thinking about other people from the scriptures or other people besides us, but how God is working through us in ways that are personal and practical. Uh, just think about this, and I'm going to ask a question and not lead into our communion time. Jesus said in that opening portion of the Beatitudes, in verse 13, he says, you are the salt of the world. Do you see yourself that way? 
Then he says, you are the light of the world. And I'm wondering, how could he say that if he is the light of the world? Mike, you got an answer for that one? Jesus says, I am the light of the world elsewhere. He says a whole lot of things about himself. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the resurrection of life. I'm the way, the truth, and all this. But here he says, and you are the light of the world. So let your light shine. How can we be the light of the world if he is the light of the world? Well, we are I, to us. I, I feel real humbled by David's message and, and, uh, and real inadequate. But one, one thing I think I can do is not carry anger in my heart um, or resentment or a list of things that aren't going right for me. You know, I, I can just let them go. And when I manage to do that, I feel better. And I'm not blaming other people, and I'm, yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm not postponing opportunities that come my way, and 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 I'm able if I'm able to like treat myself and the people around me more kindly. Mm. I think that's a tiny little measure. Yeah, uh, tiny little measure, and, and and sometimes it's my own self, you know, like I'll notice. I'm laying in bed and my my fists are clenched or something. And it's like, well, what is this? You know, and why is this necessary? And I if I let them go, uh, I feel like if I let the muscles go, I feel like, well, I'm letting some anger or some worry go and that I really don't need to drag around with me every day and enter into every interaction with everyone. So yeah. Um, that's not much, but, uh, yeah, but it, but it's something. Yeah. Something. Um, I want you to think about who has been a light in your world. Who has brought you some light recently? What did that look like? Who has been a little lighthouse to you? It's as simple as this, folks. I don't know her name. I don't see her face right now. I'd never seen her before. But Flavian, when his thing came up and we were all talking and Dawn was sharing, where he is staying, there is someone there with a bright smile who kept waving. And I don't think she meant, hey, here I am, notice me. I think she was saying, hi, everyone. And I'm simply saying, that was a light to me. Simple as that. <laughs> I saw the same person, Bart, and had yeah. the same impression and did you get the same impression indeed i did yeah that's fantastic I, I want us to think about that um as you go about your day and allowing god to do through you whatever god wants to do and notice this you are the salt of the world of the earth if the salt is in you you are the light of the world if the light is in you. Do you realize Jesus does not ask or expect us to do anything that he already isn't in himself and doing of his spirit? He just loves to do it through us if we let him. That's what makes us salty. That's what illumines our life. So he wants us to go and be salted and be illuminating the light through the light in us. So with that, let us now focus on that 
time when Jesus got with his disciples to impart in their understanding, but even more so into their hearts and lives. This is what I am about. This is who I am. I am the bread of life. I am the very essence of life. Unless he says these words, and you better not take them literally because they're always meant spiritually, but those that heard it said, I can't, I can't accept that. This is too much. He says, I am the bread of life. Unless you eat this bread, you have no life in yourselves. Unless you drink my blood, you have no life in yourselves. He's talking about the essence of who he is, the life, who gives us life, if we're willing to let him, just as David shared. And when Jesus started those Beatitudes in verse 3, the first blessing he says is, blessed are the poor in spirit. You see, those who are arrogant spiritually, they don't need anything or anyone, not somebody else, not God. How are you doing? I'm fine. Need any help? No, I'm good to go. I've got it. How many times have you said that? God is saying, no, you don't. But until you recognize that, I'll wait. Let us come to him right now, acknowledging that we haven't got it. But he not only has it, but he is it. All that we are called to be is in Christ. So if he is in you, by his grace, it's a gift, through your faith, your willingness to receive it, that's simple, then I invite you to join with me and Dawn here to partake with Jesus in that upper room. When he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, saying, this is my body. It's given for you. Take and eat. And as often as you do this, remember me, he said. Let us remember the one who never forgets us. Then he took the cup. The cup was a cup of wine. Wine had so much symbolism, but it was not symbolic of blood. And Jesus gave it that meaning. A prohibition for the Jews has always been not to partake of the blood of an animal. You cannot eat an animal that's been strangled because the blood is still in it, because the blood is the life. And Jesus says, this is my blood. It is of the new covenant, not the old covenant and the blood of animals shed over and over again. The blood of the new covenant. It's in my blood through my life. Take this, all of you, and drink it. And as often as you do, remember me, he said. Let us remember him. Father, thank you for this time together, such a precious time in this past hour and the hour that preceded. Thank you for David and for uh, everybody that was contributing for the Reed Sins, giving us a song right there on the spot, uh, for our readings this morning from Joan, from the sharing, just everybody participating together. And thank you for the simplicity and the beauty of this gathering the simplicity and the beauty of us gathering with you at the table and how in those elements there's such a profound mystery that yet is revealed in part to us of your love for us and your desire to be that salt and light in our lives and through our lives to the people around us. Help us to be allowing you to be who you are all day long, on all life long. Father, we pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you.
May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you all. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Thank you. Love you.